Behold, it's the orbital launch mount where I would put my flight ready full stack if I had one. Actually, Booster 7 was removed from the orbital launch mount, Booster 9 got some Raptor engines, and SpaceX was working on a new two-point lifting system for Starships. Jack Byers up at South by Southwest this week, so you're stuck with me and Nick behind the camera. Let's get going with this week's Starbase update. Okay, seriously, Nick, did we really have to hike all the way over here to get the shielding? <laughs> Let's talk about the orbital launch mount shielding real quick. You know they've got the shields they've been installing around the outside of the orbital launch mount. That's to protect the sensitive insides, the pipes and wiring and stuff like that, from being melted by the flames of 33 Raptor engines. You can see on the left-hand side from this perspective, that's actually a door. It's like, like a portal on a ship that they can open and close. But on the right-hand side, there's still a couple panels open. Maybe that's so that they can just get equipment in and out of the orbital launch mount more easily while they continue to work on it. On the far side, we saw them lift a panel up that looked like it was supposed to connect to the booster quick disconnect, but didn't quite go as planned. It looks like nature or balance or physics had something to say about the way they were lifting it. Now, you can't just slap panels on the orbital launch mount and call it a day. They've actually also been working to seal the gaps between the panels. They've put some smaller sub panels in between, seem to be welding them in place so that it's sealed all the way around. You don't want an open seam or something like that that can catch the exhaust of a Raptor engine. Like the mock diamonds will fit right through that little seam if you leave it there. So they continue to weld those other shields into place to fill all the gaps on the orbital launch mount. We also saw more pipes for the deluge system delivered to the launch site. Remember, the deluge system is the water system that's supposed to help manage the energy of 33 Raptors all firing at the same time when there's no flame trench. Now, the system's not completely installed yet, so there was some speculation, maybe they were gonna try to do it before the first flight. If they wanna fly ASAP, they're probably not gonna wait for it, but they keep making progress on that project. Back at the Remedio storage site, the nose cone NC-31 was prepared for testing. It ended up heading over to Massey's for a date with the jail. More on that in a little bit. Also back behind me, there's a new structure that has ship mounting points on it. The orientation of those mounting points seem to match what they use to just secure a ship. The big LR-1750 crane was of course working on it. This stand seems to be a little taller. Maybe it's tall enough that engines can fit underneath for installation. Remember, those Raptor vacuums are especially large. It's a bit of a hike from the tent where they store the Raptors though. Are they actually going to use this for installation? Are they gonna move it somewhere else? I guess there's one way to find out. Okay, we were driving by and we literally turned over this way to show what's going on with the Ship 24 payload bay. Interestingly, the last couple weeks we've seen workers in and out of the payload section. By the way, it's the one in the middle there. Um, there's not supposed to be anything really going on in there. Remember, it used to have the old Pez dispenser or whatever, but are they working on header tanks? Are they doing final wiring, some sort of internal checkouts? If you've got any guesses on what they may be doing, let us know down in the comments. We don't know, we're just talking about it. Okay, over here on the backside of Remedios, SpaceX has been working with this big drilling rig. They're making some massive holes in the ground back behind me. What are they gonna put in? Are they gonna make another mega bay, a giga bay? Is it gonna be like a Mark III full thrust block eight bay? Who knows, but we'll keep watching to see what ends up on the footprint that they're preparing back here on the backside. So everybody's rooting for Booster 7 and Ship 24 to be the ones that go on the orbital test flight, but work continues on Booster 9 as well. It already went through a bunch of cryo testing and it now resides behind me in the mega bay. We actually caught a Raptor engine headed in for installation. We're gonna keep looking for that to get its complete complement of engines and at some point roll out to the launch pad. Is that gonna happen before or after a test flight? One way to find out, we'll keep watching. So over here back at the crane yard, they've been working on this new way to lift ships. You remember all the attachment points that are on the top of the ships and then they, they get the squid and they attach it and there's a lift that goes all the way up there and then, you know that, but then if you wanna fly the ship, you have to replace the tiles and remove the points and how do you reach it if it's on the stack? All these problems, right? Well, they've been working with this new two-point lifter back here. Grackles love it. And they're going to use this, it looks like, to mimic the behavior of the chopsticks when using a crane. We've seen them back here seemingly doing some, I guess, load testing on it, using the same fittings that you would see on a ship. It'll be interesting to see this in action. Hope we see it soon. Remember, out here at Starbase, they're building the machine that builds the machines. So the work never stops. Ship 28's nose cone, 
the point of it, again, was stacked on top of the payload bay section back here in the high bay. Now remember, Ship 28 should include some improvements over Ship 26 and Ship 27. They've got that new method of making the domes. Even though they're only using it on one of the domes here, you gotta start somewhere. We'll see if they continue that on with further iterations. Oh, good grief. The video notes say we're on a roll with nose cones, but I refuse to say that out loud. <laughs> I have standards. Continuing on with our pointy bit update, that NC31 nose cone actually rolled up Remedios here and went that way on its way to Massey's. Gonna do some structural testing out there, remember. It looked like it had a little bit of a tag along with it. There was a stand that was tagging along. I do hope, however, that they missed all the potholes on Highway 4. It's getting bad out there, y'all. Okay, while we're here, SPMTs. They're like a combination of the stork that brings babies in Charon that ferries the dead here at Starbase. Sometimes they're bringing new ships or boosters out to the launch site. Sometimes they're taking dead ships and boosters back for scrapping. We actually saw some of these roll up to booster seven on the orbital launch mount. Caused a bit of a stir at Starbase Live. Let's go see what actually happened there. All right, so like we mentioned, SPMTs, right? Caused a big fuss in the stream chat this week. Normally, SPMTs go everywhere. It's not a big deal for them to roll willy-nilly all over Starbase. But this time, they rolled up next to Booster 7. Not only did they roll up to the booster, they were also stacked with tons of counterweights. Literally, tons of counterweights. Why do they need counterweights? When you want to move a booster, you want the center of mass to be low. The booster's really tall, it has a lot of weight. The SPMT is pretty beefy, but you want that whole system to have a, like a stable, low to the ground center of mass. So you put a lot of extra weight on the SPMT so that when you put the booster on top, the center of mass is low to the ground. With the SPMTs parked next to the booster with the counterweights, it was clear it was gonna roll somewhere. The question was, how far? So up next, we saw the chopsticks swing into action and remove Booster 7 from the orbital launch mount. We've got some great shots of this, so here's a play-by-play -play of how the process works. First, the ship QD arm needs to swing back out of the way, allowing the chopsticks to pass. With room to move, the chopsticks rise up the tower. They then position themselves under the booster lifting points. And after a bunch of adjusting and fiddling, the lower stabilizer arms swing inwards and connect to hold points on the booster. These arms are the smaller triangles that help adjust the exact positioning of the booster. Remember, you've got to get this thing exactly on the mount or the stand so that it's nice and stable. Once the stabilizers are in place, the booster can be lifted. As it's lifted, two pins on the orbital launch mount help keep it centered. Remember, you don't want it banging against anything as it lifts up. After it clears the top of the OLM, the chopsticks swing the booster over and then lower it. They bring it closer to the ground, then swing it a little more. A pair of stabilizer pins rise up from the transporter and connect to the aft end of the booster. Just like on the OLM, these help the booster get into the exact right position above the stand. Again, you don't want the engines bumping against anything as it's lowered. Once it's down, 20 clamps move into position, securing the booster to the stand and completing the process. At the end of the day, SpaceX plays a complicated symphony of pins and arms all the way down. So anyways, what was the eventual fate of Booster 7? Did it roll back the production site for more work? Was it scrapped? Is it ready for flight? Find out next time on the next episode of Never mind, I'm supposed to tell you in this video. It's right behind me, isn't it? Booster 7 just took a leisurely stroll over to the cryo test stand. It's likely there were some systems on the orbital launch mount that are easier to work on if there's not a huge booster in the way. Maybe these are final preps for stage zero itself. In any event, Booster 7 did not take the roll of shame back up Highway 4 to the production site, and it stands ready next to the chopsticks for what may it be its final lift onto the orbital launch mount before flight. Wrapping up the week, Nick made a trip out to Massey's to see what was happening there. Actually, I was driving and Nick was in the passenger seat taking pictures, but that's not important to the update. You can see that NC31 that we said rolled out here, it actually made it inside the structural test scan, that nose cone jail that we were talking about. What exciting forces will it encounter? One way to find out, we'll keep an eye on it and let you know in next week's Starbase update. Nick, maybe we should install a Massey's cam out here and just save ourselves the trip. Anyways, thanks for riding along with us for this week's Starbase update. Don't forget, if you want us to keep doing these, you enjoy the explanations, or you think I got something wrong, tell us down below in the comments. For now, I'm John Galloway for NASA Spaceflight. We had Nick and Sweeney behind the camera today, and we will see you nerds later.